Should you feel bad or feel guilty if you feel like, man, life's a bit of a disappointment, like maybe disappointment with God, like God lets you down? Is it true that God will never let you down? That's the question we're going to take up in this five-minute Bible study. Welcome. My name is John Whitaker. If we haven't met before, I've been a pastor and a Bible college professor for nearly 30 years, and my heart really is to uh, bring the Bible to life and help you see how it connects with your life. And if that sounds like something that would be helpful to you, then go ahead and click subscribe right now and join me every week for a five-minute Bible study. In this particular study, we're wrestling with that question of, will God never let you down? I was sitting in church this past Sunday and we were singing a well-known uh, worship song. It's only a few years old and yet it's become quite popular. And one of the refrains in that song is, God will never let me down. It's not a far stretch to connect that idea with a well-known off-quoted Bible verse, Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28 says that God will work all things together for good to those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. And the dangerous part of that is we could easily hear that idea and that verse in the context of the American dream, in the context of, man, if you, if you just wait on God, everything's going to turn out okay. There's a silver lining behind every cloud and everything will work out uh, good in the end. And the reality is, is that's not what that verse is promising. Romans 8, 28 does not promise that there's a silver cloud or silver lining behind every cloud and that everything is going to work out good in your life. Um, that God will take even the hard stuff in your life and turn it out to good in the here and now. Uh, and in order to see that, we need to look at the context of Romans 8, 28. And if you look earlier to where that paragraph begins, the paragraph begins in Romans 8, 18. And Romans 8, 18 says that uh, our present sufferings um, are going to be resolved in the glory to come. Let me read you this verse. For I consider that the sufferings of this present world are not worth to be compared to the glory that is to be revealed to us. And so suffering is a reality, but we're looking forward to glory. And as you keep reading the text, Paul explains what he has in mind by that. Uh, Paul talks about us uh, about the whole creation even suffering and being uh, longing for its day of liberation from its suffering to decay. And that day will come when the children of God are ushered into glory. And then he follows that up by saying uh, that we ourselves as children of God, we long and we even groan and we agonize waiting for uh, our glory to be revealed. And he, he refers to the redemption of our body, that day when resurrection will come. So earth is going to be restored, renewed, remade. We're going to get a, a resurrected body in glory. And that's when everything will be worked out for good. And so in the context of Romans 8, 28, we're not talking so much about uh, everything working out in this life. We're actually looking forward to the glory that is to come. We're looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth. We're looking forward to the resurrection when all our sufferings will be wiped away. And this text actually says that the children of God are like little kids uh, looking forward to Christmas. We're on tiptoe. We're eagerly waiting or we're looking forward to a friend to come watching out the window and waiting expectantly that we're eagerly anticipating that glory. And then it says God's going to work all things together for good to those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. And Here's the reason that's so important. If we, if we expect everything to turn out eventually for our good in this life, if we got, expect God to even take the hard things in our life now and maybe bring some good out of them, which he might do, but it's not going to take away all the pain or all the heartache. If we expect that in this life, if we sing that song, God's never going to let me down, and, and we sing it believing that that's going to happen somehow in the here and now, we're setting ourselves up for heartache. We're setting ourselves up for disappointment and frustration. We're setting our, ourselves up really for our faith even to be maybe shaken, shaken to its core because somehow we think God's got, got to take everything that's happened and bring good out of it in the here and now. And while he might bring some good out, in the here and now. There might be some positive benefit. Um, ultimately, what that 
that text is promising. And what that truth is about is that in the world to come, God's going to take all the heartache, all the pain, and it's going to be outstripped and outshined by the glory that is to be revealed. And so don't expect this world to do too much for you. Don't expect all your hopes, your dreams, your longings to be fulfilled in this world. Don't put it on God's lap that, God, you've got to make it all turn out good in this world. Don't expect a fairy tale ending in this world. Know that God will never let you down and God will work everything out for your good, but he's going to do so when the new heavens and the new earth and the resurrection comes. In the life to come, everything that's been hard will be outshined by the glory that's to come.